Leslie, Leanne. And uh, on your side, Manish. Yeah. Um, I, I invited uh, Puneet to Heads Up Solutions team. Uh, Puneet has been on previous meetings also with, with Leanne and the team. Uh, Manish Heads Up Delivery in India. Uh, and then they, they both, Solution and Delivery team, you know, they report under me. So yeah, so so we are the entire team at Aptara for now for this meeting. Hey, everyone. All right. So who can start us off with the overall um, summary of what the project is all about? Uh, this is the grading project, right, Leanne, which the, the details you shared last this week? Is, yeah, and apologies. I didn't give you a ton of details. I really wanted to keep it a surprise. I'm just kidding. We really didn't have a ton at that moment, but I knew that you guys would probably be a really good fit for it, so I wanted to jump on it. Um, this is a, a um, project that involves attaching math grading guidelines into courses, and this is specifically high school and middle school math. And then um, do any of my colleagues have some additional information outside of that? And then also, um, Rem, and I gave you those, like the actual how to attach grading guidelines and those instructions as well for you guys to, to take a peek at. Um, but beyond that, um, Molly, do you have much to add in terms of like what are grading guidelines? Yeah, guys, I can I can kind of give you what I understand of the process and, and a promise of more details to follow. I've been trying to dig into this um, to try and make it as easy for you to to help us with as possible. Um, it involves a few different internal systems um, that we can get access to you, um, access for you um, with no problem, but it's just a matter of like how best to structure structure the work so that it, it's as easy as possible for you. Um, we have some courses that we've migrated from our legacy um, EMS into our new EMS and in doing that some of the assessment uh, metadata some of the assessment information didn't carry over and the thing that didn't carry over were grading guidelines so the thing that shows a teacher how a student should be working out a math problem and then the rubric the the thing that says if they did this give them one point if they did this give them two points all of that is already created, it's already authored, and it's in one system. It's just not appearing in in the system that's that teachers and students are are using um, in some of our schools. So we need to copy and paste from the legacy system that information and get it into a template that then then be used to produce a PDF that can be attached um, to the courses in the new. EMS. So that's kind of the overview. Um, I can show you what I know so far about how that how that process occurs. Um, but before I, I share my screen and do that, do you guys have any questions just at the outset? Um, yeah, uh, EMS, when you say EMS again, you know, uh, is it e-learning management system? Uh, is that what it is or is it a different word for E? Did yeah, just, just our, oh, sorry. Just, just out of curiosity, you know, I want to know what, what the E stands for in EMS. Yeah, our education management system. Education so, management. Okay, got, yeah. got it. Yeah, we, we, see, we hear a lot, you know, LCMS, LMS, you know, every, you know, client of ours have, have a slightly different naming to it, so it's better to know what it is for you. Yep. Sure, we're ready. Okay. All right, so I will share, and again, my apologies because I am just learning how to do this, um, but we can learn it together. Let me share my screen. Let's see. All right. Okay, so first thing I'll show you is what we eventually want to have. Um, so this is the kind of PDF that we want to produce and then attach in our courses. Um, it starts off with just the name of the course and then the grading guidelines, um, a boilerplate statement about, about the um, what's contained in the document, and then a this is where the copying and pasting comes in. The assessment name, the, the assessment item, which is what you see um, in this grayish kind of font, and then the, the grading lines. So the what a point sh 
what points should be assigned, and if a problem needs to be worked out, the steps would be shown here. And that just repeats, so the assessment, the actual assessment item, and then grading guidelines, and so on and so on. Um, for all of the assessments in the course. The get this information or well, first I'll start with um, I think Leanne already shared with you these guidelines about how to attach them as a PDF once once that document has been produced. She I think may have also sh shared with you this template, which is um, the foundation of, of the document I was just sharing. Um, so assessment name, the prompt, the guidelines, assessment name, prompt guidelines, and so on throughout the whole course. Um, and then the way that you get to that is, let's see. So we have a spreadsheet of all the, the courses that we need this done for. Um, so you'll see here in this spreadsheet, um, there's a list running down this left hand side of 43 different courses or 42 different courses and we would need one document like this one I shared back here created for each of those 43 courses. Okay. Okay. And to create that um, you use this course ID uh, which is over here in column A and I'll I had already selected one, but I'll go in and do uh, math 6A. And then you search for it here. Um, are you guys already familiar with our with this system with Connexus? Um, we, we are one week old in the system. Uh, so yeah, okay. so we are certainly taking a deeper dive into it. Uh, yeah, last week we got to know about Connexus. You know, yeah, yeah, we're getting there. OK, well, that's not brand new. Um, but so uh, going in um, and and we could probably just get you access to these courses so this might not be the way that you would get in there but um, I search for that ID that I just you know pulled from the spreadsheet and then it brings up the the course for me let me put this down um, then I'm going to open it up so that I can see the course tree for this particular course. I'm going to move that over. The way that you know um, which of so these little icons let you know when there's an assessment for a lesson. The way that you know that there is an assessment that requires this copying and pasting that that has metadata that didn't make it into the the new platform is when you see a doubled up icon like that. So where you see the two quiz icons um, down here where you see the two test icons, you know that that's one you'll need to click in and find this this um, uh, metadata for. So you click into the lesson and I'm just going to be paging through until I get to the assessment itself. And then once in the assessment, um, you want to find, so it's not here. I'm going to click to the next page. I don't believe it's here either. Nope. I am going to scroll through until I see part two. And this this will all be documented for you. But part two is um, any of the assessments that have that information that didn't copy, they are part two assessments. And um, that's where the error occurred. So you click into that assessment. And we don't even really need to let it load because what you is the assessment ID, which is up here in the URL. So I copy that. And then we'll go back in to Connexus. Um, I could go home and then click on assessments. I've actually already got it here. I'll show you. Um, go back to that main page, click on assessments. And then similarly to how I searched for the course, I'm going to search for that assessment. And it pulls up, it, it returns a list of um, all of the times that that assessment is used. What you're interested in is, is finding where the question and question groups appear. And so you scroll down, click here on question groups, 
you click into the, the link here and click again. And then you get the grading guidelines. Um, and so it's a matter of selecting the HTML and copying and pasting it so that the formatting doesn't get lost and then putting it back into that Word template um, that I showed at the beginning. Um, I think that was the, yeah. And then going back and doing that for the second of the question, um, the, the second question in that group for the assessment. Um, it, for, for that quiz in the course. And then doing that for, let me get back to it. Each time there are this doubled up icon um, listed in the course tree. So that is the process. It um, It is feeling more comfortable to me now that I've, I've kind of like spent the last few hours getting all that information from different people um i will document it for you but it's it's really just a matter of kind of familiarizing yourself with those various the the spreadsheets that will tell you the course id getting into the course itself identifying where these assessments are where where the information needs to be copied and pasted and then getting into the assessment manager in connexus to pull that information out and get it into the word document um, could you show that word document again? I just wanted to yes. sort of have a visual of it's one For course, sure. but it could have many assessments, and so it could be you know, row. Yep. yep. One yeah, after so another. Yep, that's right. So you're clicking like the, the assessment name, the prompt, the grading its assessment name over and over so that it will appear like this. There's that dividing decimal <sighs> quiz part two, which is what we saw over. Um, let me figure out where that was. That's this whole numbers and operations mini unit review quiz part two. That's what you're seeing here. And then the um, find it again. And then the oops, that's not the right one. I apologize, guys. Um, the then you would find the item itself. You know where it says the the question, whatever the students are being asked to do and then going in and copying and pasting those grading guidelines from the, the HTML that I showed. And then, yeah, Carrie, as you said, repeating that for all of those places in the course tree where the doubled up icon appeared. And until we actually go in and start doing the work, there's no count of how many assessments per course. We only have that 42 courses. Yeah, that's right. You can you can get a sense by doing a scan of the course tree. Um, you know, so for this one, it looks like there are a bunch. <laughs> two, two, yeah, two to three per unit. Two yeah. to three per unit, and there are seven units, so about twenty. Um, but I don't know honestly if that's like an average number. If it's about 20 for each of those 43 or whether there's more maybe that's something that we could do a spot check up at to get them um an estimate mm -hmm. yeah but when when talking to the internal teams about this they said that once um once they kind of like got that process down the process i just explained that it was about um an hour or two of work per I course Since I'm still sharing, is there anything that you guys want me to click into or show that I went too fast on or didn't explain well? Uh, maybe I missed one thing. Uh, after we put all these details into the Word document, do we just save as PDF? Uh, I understand PDF is a requirement uh, after you know we put all this in a Word document. Yep. yep, that's a great question, and I don't know if this document has that very clearly spelled out. It does not look like it has it very clearly spelled out, um, so I think we would need to get that um, defined for you. Okay, okay. 
Uh, another question is about uh, end date by when uh, this 43 courses work is needed so that I can, you know, plan capacity accordingly. End of the week. Yeah, as soon as possible. <laughs> like everything. Yeah, the, we have students and teachers in these courses now and, and the pain point for teachers is just that they don't have this information as they're grading students quizzes and tests. Um, so it really is. You know, for. As soon as possible. Raman, do you have an idea of how quick like. Is it even possible that you could staff up to get something like this done within a week? Uh, well, uh, Within a week, uh, well, it, it's not a lot of work. It's a small amount of work we're talking about. Let's say we go by the numbers or a max number. What just Molly mentioned is two hours per course. So we're talking about some 86 hours. Yes, you know, we have capacity. Uh, it's just that it's a matter of, you know, getting getting one or two right in, in the beginning, which is going to happen, I, I, I guess, tomorrow or day after. So can we can we catch up by end of the week? Uh, well, answer is yes. Well, to be sure, I, I'll know tomorrow. Uh, again, like I said, and it, it, it's a simple work. It's about putting people on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so tomorrow we will start knowing end of the week is a timeline. We can't delay it further. So we will have questions for sure tomorrow. Uh, if we don't, you know, if you don't see uh, questions from us, you will rather see uh, a ready PDF from our side. Hey, can you tell us if this is correct? If this is all good to go? Because after that, we'll put five more people on it, you know, starting Wednesday. So, so that's what I'm thinking here. Um, from a from a quick pricing standpoint, Leanne, do you uh, prefer a do you have a rate card you want us to follow? Do you want me to come back to you on that, or do you just bill on hourly basis? It's a small work. Let me know how you want. Um, to. I have no preference at this point. So whatever uh, you have in mind, or or if, just send me what you got, and um, and I'll uh, work to keep things moving on my end when it comes to like budget and purchase order and things like that. Yeah, so what I'll do is again just to begin this work uh, and you know and you know internally leadership will ask you know I need to see an approval. Let me put two hours into an hourly rate into 43 courses. Let me send you that cost. Uh, we'll just do it. You know we, we'll see if it is four Love hours. It. I, yeah. I, I won't work on this project, but I'll tell you this kind of work if it comes in future might you know take us four hours. Uh, yeah. Maybe eventually we may get to two. So let me go with this two hours ballpark if it, if it is OK with you. Yeah, uh, that works. That's great. OK, sounds good. So let me do that. Let me get going tomorrow. Uh, PDF guidelines is something Molly mentioned. She, so Molly, you're going to be adding that in the document, correct? Uh, in the guidelines document? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out what, what needs to happen with that document once it's completed to get it in, in PDF. Yep. Uh, again, you know, we we have not like read every line of the guidelines document yet. yet. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, one thing I want to ask, uh, and then if I miss to you know see it right now today in the call is after we create a PDF, uh, do we ingest in the in the connection platform, uh, uh, or or do we email those to you? Sorry if I missed this, you know, part uh, in in the walkthrough. No, and I think that we we still have to figure that out internally. Um, so I think for now you would just deliver them to us. Yeah, by email or if we can get you set up um, to just uh, share the files with us through Teams or something like that. OK, um, OK, so uh, Le Leanne, is it OK with you? Uh, I'm assuming we have access you know, to Connexus, the email IDs we shared. I'm assuming we have it. Um, I'll double check with my team. Is it OK if we say use uh, same accesses for this project yeah. I can send you a different list of team members who's going to be working on it eventually but you know while while because we have to get going tomorrow can we use that access is it okay yeah you can that's perfect that's great and you can if you can send that list to Carrie Carrie would you mind if there's anybody who's not on the existing list uh, that Robin will send you can you can you work to get them access and if you need any help Monica can support there because she got the initial list of people set up Yep, that was going to be my next question. If you needed access, and if, there's, if you knew of anybody who didn't have access, I could start working on that right away. Yeah, so, so, so you know, it'll be it'll be different set of people working on this project vis-a-vis -vis the project we we started mm -hmm. already. Next, uh, so uh, Carrie, if I you know if not today, tomorrow, first thing we'll have a list of names out to you. How much time does it take to get us access? Is it does it take a day or longer? Uh, it takes 24 to 48 hours, but we've been asking for an expedited access. Carrie and Monica can fill you in on that. We got it for uh, other members of, of Brahmin's team, so um, we can probably get it to you within 24 hours. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it usually takes like till the next day. You know, if I ask early enough in the day, I get it the next day. So, yeah. And and I'm assuming uh, the access people got for eTex, my, my my team members, they will also be able to do this work. And it's yeah. a similar process, right? The roles of access. That's right. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think uh, let us get this, you know, starting at this guideline. Uh, Molly, we'll wait to hear from you uh, on any any more updates in those documents. Uh, we, if 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 you know, if uh, I guess Carrie, you you share the recording with us, correct? Yes. Uh, today. All right, mm -hmm. so we, we'll get the team uh, planning going on at our end while we wait for you know all the information from you. Um, tomorrow, I, I really want to, and this is something I, I want to aim. Tomorrow, we come back with questions or you know one or two guidelines document the PDF documents. Hey, you know, let us know are we on the right track? If yes, we put more people on it. Uh, one other question, last. If not by end of this week, if we happen to do this by Monday, uh, again because I, you know I've not done it yet, uh, is it a mm -hmm. deal breaker? You know, because we have a weekend to put people on. You know, we, we can utilize that weekend extra buffer. You know, for us, is there a deal breaker, or can we send few by Friday by uh, remaining by Monday? Uh, or no. Do we? I'm asking if there is an extra question for that weekend. No. I think there is, unless maybe Molly or 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 Carrie are not considering something, but I think that would be fine to give them the weekend. What do you guys think? For sure. Perfect. Perfect. Appreciate that, but yeah, my, my my aim is to to do it by Friday, so I, I'll work towards it in case you know there's unforeseen happens. Uh, you know, we need a little more time, so Mondays is a safer bet. So yeah, Friday. We'll aim for that. Thank you. Okay. Great sounds good. Uh, and Molly, I'll just work with you to do review the first batch that's delivered. Yep. Um, I'm out of the office on Wednesday, but I will pick up whatever I can get at the end of the day and forward that. And or, email communication. Do I? Uh, is it okay to use the same group of people who we who we see on the invite today? Uh, yeah, you or, can just send to me, and I'll forward it to whoever needs to read it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, nothing else from my side. Puneet, Manish, anything else from your side? No, I'm good, Robin. Uh, I'm good. Okay. All right. You, uh, uh, I thought you were saying something. Oh, no, that was it. I was just saying all good. Sounds good. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, all right, guys, you. we'll talk soon. Thanks, Take man. care. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.